Hello everyone. In this section, we will learn about the feedback and control systems and the basics about proportional derivative and integral control, the so-called PID controls. And if you recall earlier in the semester, I used this as a tool to show you how a feedback control system works, right? So we have a plant, which is a, this a flexible beam, and the, the purpose is to control the vibration of this flexible beam, right? So we have, first we have um, the sensors, which can give us the sensing signal, all right? And then we have the controller, in this case is the, is the control action plus the actuator, right? So and this is a feedback process and uh, we have input in this case for vibration control the input well is zero okay we would like to have a zero vibration and the arrow reply the uh, measure is the vibration all right so basically through a feedback control very often we use negative feedback control all right so this is the general block diagram of a of a control system right and obviously um we can combine since this is uh, the control and the plant in serial in a serial connection we can combine them into actually one block okay such as here g of s all right so this is open loop no no feedback control this is closed loop with feedback control we have a positive we have a negative and uh, We can easily derive the transfer function of this such this feedback system equal to g of s over one plus g of s times h of s. Okay, and if h of s equal to one, then this is formula is simply g of s over one plus g of s. Okay, and to derive this, and actually it's quite a straightforward. And we can clearly see C of S is equal to E of S times G of S, right? And obviously E of S is equal to R of S times H times C of S. Okay, so we have this, and then by the uh, definition of the transfer function is output Laplace, trans Laplace transform over the input of Laplace transform. So we can arrive at this, this format. And in this case, actually, um, we utilize some of the um, basic operations about the uh, um, block diagram algebraic rules okay and there's some commonly used are listed here and i'm not going to go through this in details you have learned this in 3338 so and these are just uh, commonly used uh, um, algebraic rules for the block to simplify or to manipulate the block diagrams okay um today we're going to the simulation will be a actually it's a rotationary um, system okay so i'm just going to do a very quick review so this is a k over js square plus bs plus k so and if the if there is no spring then there is a just a js square plus bs in the in the denominator if there's no spring right all right so um, we have the definition of a damping ratio okay and even from here we can see just that by increasing the gain we will decrease damping ratio right so that's the reason when we increase the springs spring stiffness the damping ratio gets smaller right and uh, the undamped natural frequency is equal to square root of k over j. All right, so now we're going to um, look at an artificial elevator system. All right, so j stands for the moment of inertia associated with that elevator, and it has a viscous friction E of s e. All right, and obviously it's it's uh, there's no spring all right and if we look at open loop for this system we just simplify uh, the task so the elevator just uh, try to keep at its original position say 
For example, it arrived at the one floor and uh, well, people may walk in and we will mimic the people walk in by a unit by a unit step function, right? And here is a command. We assume elevator is not moving, so r of s equal to zero, okay? And uh, we have the measurements, okay? And in this case, we can measure the position of the elevator. So and the feedback, and uh, here we form the error, and it will become send it to the controller, and we will use different controller. So the very first one. Let's just use a very simple one, which is K controller. Okay, so first we will look at the open loop function. That means the loop here is open. Okay, so the transfer function is simply C of S over D of S equal to one over J S squared plus B S. And this system is unstable when we have a unit step. Okay. And uh, the reason is unit step is one over s, right? The Laplace transform. And from this original system, and we also know there is a pole at the origin, which is O, so one over s. So this one over s times this input one over s becomes one over s square, right? And the, the inverse Laplace transform of that is actually a unit, it's a ramp function. So basically, this is unstable because of the pole at the origin, right? And uh, now um, we're going to look at it with a proportional controller. So with a proportional controller, this controller is simply a KP, all right, again. And uh, what we have now is a C of S over D of S equal to one over J S squared plus B S plus KP. And this can be easily derived Okay, and uh, in this case, the E, okay, this is error. The E, we can also derive the error transfer function, okay, since the R is equal to zero, so this is equal to negative the regular transfer function, C of S over R of S, over D of S, okay. And uh, so this is a negative, and this is also negative, so, and uh, we can apply the final value theorem to get the steady state error when the system is subject to the step disturbance. Okay, and this uh, in this case in time domain this is equal to one, but in Laplace domain is equal to one over s. Okay, so this is a TD over s, which is one over s, since TD is equal to 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 one. All right, and this is the error transfer function. We put it right there, and obviously we take s to zero. Okay, this term will drop. This term will drop. Okay, and this s and this s cancels out. So the steady state error is equal to negative one over kp. So we are also going to do numeric simulation in a moment to verify this result. Okay, and here. I just have a few comments to make. So now with a proportional control, okay, and the system now is stabilized. Okay, there is a steady state error. The magnitude is equal to one over kp. So the larger the kp, the smaller the steady state error. But on the other hand, we know this gain from the previous slides. When we increase the gain, the damping ratio will get smaller, right? So the damping ratio gets smaller. That means well, the system will oscillate more. All right, so this is regarding the um, proportional gain, and we will see the simulation in, in, in a moment, right? And uh, so, in summary, with uh, the proportional gain, now the loop is closed, system becomes stable when subject to disturbance. Actually, in general, a feedback system is much more stable when subject to disturbances as compared to an open loop system, all right? And also in general, the higher the KP gain, the less the steady state error. However, okay, with the KP gain, the system damping ratio decreases and we are preserve more oscillations, all right? Okay, so next one we're going to show is the effect of integral control. And here we have a controller, which is a 
given in this format and obviously this is a PI controller plus proportional plus interval control so we have the proportional part which is the KP and we have the interval part which is 1 over S and if we expand this term we have two items the first one is a KP second item is a KP over TS times S TI times S and very often whatever the coefficient in front of 1 over s, 1 over s is the integral operator, we call it i gain. In this case, it's kp over ti. And in general, as we're going to see, show right there, since the order of the transfer function being increased, in general, when the i gain is very large, very likely the system will become unstable. Okay. All right, so we can derive the e of s over d of s. Right, and uh, um, basically we can just uh, replace this controller by this one, and then we can derive this uh, uh, transfer function e of s over d of s equal to this, right? And uh, um, on the denominator, on the numerator we have s, in the denominator we have s cube, j s cube plus b s square plus k p s plus k p over t i, right? And uh, we also have the E of S, okay, which we can easily derive by placing D of S on the right hand side. And we also know in this case, since this is a unit step, D of S is equal to 1 over S, right? And now we use final value theorem, right, to try to get the steady state error, okay? And the things in this case, we have s already one s here, all right, and there's one s right here, so this has become s squared. So that means even though this one of s cancels one of the, this s, there's still one of s on the top. So that means when s approaches zero, these three terms become zero. This is a constant, but the numerator is zero, so the error is zero. So that means if the system is still stable, the steady state error with integral control is zero. Okay, and so the comment on the steady state uh, on the I control on the steady state error is very simple. If the system is still stable, if you can guarantee the stability of the system, the I controller actually can eliminate the steady state error. So make sure the error converge to zero. However, if the gain is too large, as we're going to show, maybe you will move one or two posts from the right hand side to the from left hand side to the right hand side. The system will become unstable. This we will also see in numeric simulation, which we will see in a moment. Okay, so we have the PI controller, we know, uh, PD control, uh, the P controller, we know it oscillates a lot, right? So what we do is we can add a derivative contraction. So it becomes actually proportional plus derivative. Okay, the derivative term, as you can see here, we can derive the transfer function C of S over D of S, and, uh, and you can clearly see the damping term, right? The derivative controller is the S, right? So in this case, the derivative gain is simply KP times TD, which is the gain in front of the S. S is the derivative operator. And uh, we can see KP times TD becomes one of the damping term. So derivative controller in this case simply increase the damping of the system. And we can easily show, okay, the steady state error, okay, still equal to one over kp, okay, because as we seen from earlier, this one, this two term will drop to zero, okay. Only what only remains the kp term will remain. So from this simple analysis, derivative gain does not change the steady state error, okay. Derivative gain can respond to the rate of a the actuating error and therefore will increase damping to the system, which we can see right there. And this corresponds to the changing of the rate. For a second system, OK, 
okay by adjusting P and D gains we can achieve a compromise between the transient performance and the accept acceptable steady state error okay so as we know the derivative gain will increase where large deriv uh, the, the pro large proportional gain will help you us to decrease the steady state error but it will make the system it will reduce the damping ratio and make the system very oscillatory so now by adding a derivative gain with a proper value gain value we can actually reduce the vibrations and uh, uh, we will see in the simulations in just a moment so just uh, and to summarize before we show the simulation we showed the open loop system since this one has no spring when it's a subject that you need a step this is unstable and then we put a sp artificial spring right which is a proportional controller you can think of the proportional controller as an artificial spring so now there is a spring right there so basically somebody step into it well the elevator will move and that may oscillate but when will, will not move to infinity as the case for the open loop because for the open loop can you you can imagine there's no spring you have a force there is a step function that means a force is added and uh, that is just going to drive the system's displacement to become larger and larger so the system is unstable to further reduce the error um, steady state error what we can do is we can introduce an integral control okay but the condition is the system still is still stable that means the eye game cannot be very very large all right and we're going to show you in simulations okay so for the eye game it can help to eliminate the steady state error if the system is still stable but it has to be used very carefully and have to make sure the system is still stable all right on the other hand because of this uh, proportional controller may cause some additional oscillations when we increase the gain right and that actually can be offset by introducing a derivative control so when we have a proportional plus derivative control we can actually further reduce the oscillations okay so very often when we design a control system uh, very often no matter it's a pd or pi or pid okay it's basically we try to achieve the optimal position the performance by adjusting the gain values each individual gain values because sometimes the gain effect will work against each other all right okay all right and uh, next we're going to show you the numeric simulations thank you